about how we actually get our edits into DaVinci Resolve. There's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, what it, the, the technical term is called conform. So if you look at the bottom edge of the screen here, there's a couple of uh, tabs. There's a bunch of tabs for different functions inside of the application. And uh, a great way to do that, if you're working in Final Cut Pro X, for example, is using scene detection. Uh, the main way to do that is through the Browse and Conform pages. So I'll just show you the scene detection page briefly. And what that allows you to do is send a full QuickTime movie without edits in it through the scene detector, and it will actually add marks. And you have controls here on the left edge, of, uh, left hand edge of the frame to uh, adjust where those marks land and then import an export list to help you with the scene detection. And this bar goes up and down to control the threshold of your um, scene detection. The other part of this is the conform page. So if we click on the conform tab, you'll see that we get this brand new interface. And what we have here is very familiar looking editorial tools because this is a brand new page for uh, Resolve 8, and I'll, I'll step you through how we conform from in uh, Final Cut Pro XML. So there's a, there, on this timeline management, uh, under this window, there's a few options here, and what we want to do is, is click on Load, and that's how we get our XML into Resolve. So I'll tap on the Load button, and that'll bring up a browser, and so we'll just navigate to where I have my XML is by default it's going to look at the uh, default settings that we uh, just set up on the project page so I'll just click OK and then it's asking me to navigate to where the folder is that has the source clips. I, I've uh, prearranged these clips into uh, a folder but typically you could in Final Cut 7 you can go ahead and just use your capture scratch. So I'm just going to click on this folder where I know the footage is, click OK and it looks like nothing's happening but actually what it's doing is conforming the timeline in the background. Now it's giving me a few warnings up here. Uh, the yellow means that it had trouble with these JPEG files, but we'll deal with that later. But the main thing is, is you can see that we've conformed most of the, the source clips. These are ProRes clips from Final Cut Pro in the timeline. And the reason I know that's done such a great job is because I can toggle back into Final Cut Pro and I can see that I have this entire timeline built out and it matches identically to the dissolves, to the gap in the, uh, that dips to black, to these uh, informational layers with the text, and so on. Toggling back into Resolve, I have a, a great opportunity now with these new tools to go ahead and change this edit. So if I unlock this button, uh, I'll click on this clip and I can actually change the length of the dissolve and change the edit point. It's really a, an amazing thing that you can uh, do that. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, fantastic that Resolve has, has progressed to this point. And just one other quick thing, I, I want to show you a new feature that was just released yesterday. If we toggle back over now into the color page, this is the layout that everybody's used to seeing in Resolve, the primary with the lift gamma gain. And uh, this is also new in Resolve 8, which we'll talk about later. This is NR noise reduction. But just released is this new tab over here where it says three-way color. Now, three-way color is what you're familiar with working in Final Cut Pro. You have your color wheels for your color offset, and you have your uh, roller to do uh, lift adjustments, uh, luminance adjustments on, on the image in the different uh, tonal range. So it's really an incredible thing that they've just added in 8.0.1 to help new users get more familiar with the color correcting workflows.